As I parked my car on the bluff, I could tell the waves were good. Nearly as good as the doodle I'd drawn hours earlier when I was supposed to be working. I had a Surfline surveillance app that let me track the waves all week, so I knew water temperature, wave height, number of seconds between the waves, and number of women on the beach ready to cheer for me <laughs> for every wave I caught. As I looked out, I could tell it was about six to eight feet, which means that if you take a fall, it's like being stuffed into a front-loading commercial washing machine set on spin cycle. I looked out on the horizon, and I could see there were about an hour and a half left of sunlight left for me to surf. So I started frantically putting on my wetsuit, and I noticed that the wetsuit was a bit tight. This was kind of validating in that in the off season, I'd been bulking up <laughs> until I realized I'd put my leg in the armhole. <laughs> you see, sometimes when you look too far ahead, you miss the thing that's right in front of you. <clears throat> I got the wetsuit on. And I also knew that per my Surfline surveillance app, the water temperature had recently dropped. So that meant unless I wanted popsicles for feet, I was going to have to wear my wetsuit booties. Now the word booty kind of brings out the 13-year-old adolescent in me. <laughs> booty. <laughs> Nonetheless, I put it on. I, put the other, I grabbed the other one and I noticed there was something jangling around in it. So I just dumped it out, assuming it was like a nickel. I didn't even look. Put it on. And I was ready to go. I crossed the train tracks just east of Suomi's Beach in Encinitas, California, and I got to the edge of Coast Highway 101. When I realized that I was going to have to play Frogger trying to avoid all the different oncoming traffic. Always on the alert for hazards ahead, I noticed ahead of me in Suomi's Park, up above Suomi's Beach, there was a college women's cross country team stretching to go for a run. Now these groups can be very dangerous in the wild. I also noticed that they were quite fit. <laughs> Which was the last thought I had before I became airborne. You see, I had noticed the white curb ahead of me as I was crossing Highway 101, the white curb on the black pavement, but I hadn't noticed the black curb on the black pavement that preceded the white curb, the one that delineates the bike lane. Now I'm flying in midair. The seagull flies by me. <laughs> it gives me this condescending look, dude, you can barely walk. What are you doing trying to fly? <laughs> so I'm in the air, no foot, no hand, no nothing touching the ground. But I'm still clutching my surfboard <laughs> until, bam, I slam into that white curb that I had seen. It was like a bowling ball being dropped from a 10-story penthouse down below. And that explosive sound called out to everyone in the park, hey, look, some man just bit it crossing the street. Come see, come see. <laughs> now, the entire women's cross-country team was hovered above me, like angels. Are you okay? I thought, that's it, I've gone to heaven. <laughs> sir, sir, are you okay? Sir, sir was like smelling salts, snapping me to my feet. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. And I ran off towards the waves. Now, I don't know what was more red, my face from embarrassment, or my newly skinned knee that now exposed through my torn wetsuit after landing on my knee, my board, and my chest. And I didn't know exactly how injured I was either because of all this adrenaline. But I did feel my knee start, starting to tighten. And probably the best course of action would have been go home, ice the knee, and not surf. I really wanted to surf. And I figured, well, the ocean water's gotten a lot colder. I can ice my knee while surfing. <laughs> well, catching my first wave revealed the flaw in that particular logic. So I'm sitting out there thinking ahead, worst case scenarios, imagining what could happen. Sharks devouring my barely bleeding knee. 
reconstructive knee surgery. But the worst, having to explain the truth of my trip and fall. And as I'm imagining these things out in the future, the best wave of the day passes me by. Further proof that when you look too far ahead, you miss the thing that's right in front of you. So as I'm thinking ahead, I, I just need to go in. So I ride the next wave in on my belly. A ride of shame. If you're a lifelong surfer, you don't ride in on your belly. So lame. And I got to the beach, but those women that were supposed to be cheering, only sneering and jeering. I limped back to my car, my wetsuit tail between my legs. I opened the car door and I started changing out of my wetsuit and I noticed there was this ring on my car seat. It was my lost wedding ring. Well, I have to be honest with you all. It was actually my backup lost wedding ring because I had lost two wedding rings. But I thought, well, if I, catch, if I find one of them, I'll get extra credit with my wife for finding one of my two lost wedding rings. <laughs> Probably not. <clears throat> And as I grabbed that ring and I put it on, it had the words Semprati inscribed in Sanskrit inside the ring, which means to be present. And that's when I realized the thing that I had dumped out of my booty when I thought it was just a nickel was actually my mi missing wedding ring. Reinforcing the fact that when you look too far ahead, you miss the ring that's right in front of you. So you're probably wondering, what is the moral to this story? <laughs> Always shake your booties. Sing it along. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. shake, shake your booties. booties. Madam Toaster. <laughs>